Hi, I'm Nigel, an engineer with over 30 years experience. Join me on my adventures as I build new, repair old, and restore beauty. This is Bleeding Rust. Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Now, like many of you guys, um, I watch quite a lot of YouTube channels, mainly engineering channels or boat restoration channels. Um, and it's fascinating the many different methods of cutting metal that there are. Um, like this sheet of three millimeter thick mild steel, for example. But what I don't see is people going into why they've chosen the method that they have, um, the pros and cons between the different ways of cutting metal. So I thought I'd do that in this episode. So I'm gonna look at three of the most common ways um, that we have of cutting metal, look at the pros and cons between the different ones. Um, also, I'm gonna demonstrate it. I'm actually, we're actually gonna do that and cut a piece, um, cut some strips off this three millimeter sheet using each of the three methods. And then maybe at the end, I'll, I'll talk about which art method I like the best, um, um, which one has the best results, etc. So, what methods are we going to use? Well, first of all, we're going to find a trusty old angle grinder. Um, this is my four and a half inch angle grinder. Um, I've got a slitter disc in it, which is a one millimeter thick uh, cutting disc. Um, you, if you order a normal cutting disc, you'll tend to get something more like this, um, which is your traditional cutting disc. They are two and a half millimeters thick. They're quite hard to use. They take quite a while to cut. Um, I find these one millimeter uh, slitter discs way better. Now they don't last anywhere near as long as one of these, but when you weigh up how long it takes to cut a piece of metal with a slitter disc compared to this, then value for money, these are better. And they're not expensive. I think a pack of 10 is maybe eight or nine pounds for a pack of 10. So that's the first method. Most people will have an angle grinder in their workshops. Um, and if you haven't, they're not expensive. Uh, this is a, a, a Makita, I think about 50 quid, something like that. And there are many, many brands of angle grinder. Um, so we'll try that first. The next method, um, again, it's a, a very traditional method of cutting metal is using one of these, a, a gas lance. Um, this one is oxypropane. Um, you can get oxyacetylene. Um, acetylene is a little bit more volatile uh, than propane, um, but acetylene or propane mixed with oxygen, it's essentially the same thing. Slightly different nozzles for the end. Uh, propane uses a two-piece nozzle, whereas acetylene uses a one-piece. Um, but essentially, it's the same thing. You have your flammable gas here, your oxygen coming in here, you mix the two using these taps, um, you heat up the metal, and then when you're ready to cut, you press this um, lever, and that shoots pure um, pressurized oxygen down the center of the flame, and that cuts the metal. Um, so we'll see that. There are pros and cons to using this. Obviously, you've got to have gas bottles, um, etc., and you're working with hot flames. But we'll go into the pros and cons a little bit later. The third method we're going to look at is slightly more sophisticated, and that is the plasma cutter. So this uses an electric arc uh, that comes out the end and compressed air from a compressor to blow the molten metal um, away and that creates a cut. And um, so that is the third method, method we're gonna use and that's the plasma cutter. So, we like I said, we're gonna use a three millimeter sheet of steel. And we're gonna cut just a simple strip off the end and um, three strips. So we'll do the same cut for each of the three methods. We'll see how long it takes um, with each method. Um, what's the setup time? to set it up and, and to do it. Um, and also how accurate is the cut and what is the result? How, how nice is the finish on the end when we've, when we've cut? So we'll do that now and I'll set up this sheet on my trusty trestles and we'll start off by using the grinder.
So, first of all, how big do we want the cut? So I, I think we're going to go 70. Let, let, let's go two inches for, for any American viewers. Two inches, which is 50 mil. So we'll go 50 mil. Easy to mark it that way. So I'm going to cut that 50mm strip off. Um, you know, I noticed me using a pencil. It's not actually a pencil, it's a, a welder's pencil um, called Silver Streak. Um, hopefully, let's see if I can, that will show up on the video. If it'll focus, focus. There you go. So that's what they are. Um, I think they sell them on uh, Amazon. Make sure you get the real thing because the first ones I ordered turned up to be normal pencils that were just silver in colour, which uh, uh, were rubbish. So, um, but these are welders pencils. They, 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 they're almost like a wax um, a colouring pencil in a way, but they're specially made for marking steel. They're excellent marks that they leave um, are easily visible. Um, and don't just disappear when you start cutting. So when I'm using the um, the plasma cutter or, the, or, or any hot method of cutting, it doesn't disappear. Um, engineer's chart works really well as well. Um, but yeah, these are really good and it was Andy from Sailor Melody that introduced me to these and I absolutely love them. So I've made my first mark, 50 mil, and we're gonna use the angle grinder to cut that. So first of all, I'm going to put fresh disc, so we've got a fresh star, we put a fresh disc on the grinder. That's another thing with these discs, they have a one way round, so make sure that the this side, so many people I see they put it on the grinder like that because it's up when they're putting it on, and then they put it on the grinder like that and then it's that way up when they do it, and that's wrong because as well as the grinder having a direction, you can see the arrow there, Discs have a direction as well, most discs. Some don't, but it's much safer. If you have it that way up, you're always gonna be the right way up for the rotation for the disc. So it should be that way up with the any wording or any pattern on the top with that side on the bottom. Uh, and anybody who doubts me on that, um, if you get a, a flat pad or a grinding disc or any other disc, the writing's on that side, why would they do it differently on a cutting disc? So yeah. I see that a lot with <laughs> patterns on that side and it shouldn't be. So with a, a, a cutting disc as well, don't be tempted to put your spanner on and tighten that on, you don't need it. It just needs to be just a little bit tight like that because the action of cutting will tighten it further. Um, if you tighten it too much, you risk crushing the center of the disc and weakening it. Um, so you should never tighten up the spanner. Okay. Now for me to cut, and I am going to leave the guard on, if you may have watched a previous video where I had a bit of a rant about people taking guards off. There is no reason for me to take this guard off. But when I come to cut, I'm going to be like this. So what I want to check is, can I cut through that without the guard being in the way? If it is, I can move the guard. And um, Some of them have a press button where it has different positions. But that is about right for me. Um, that way I'll be cutting because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you'll, you'll have it so that it's the other way. But I'm right-handed, so I'll be going that way. And if you saw, if you did watch that episode where I had my rants about um, grinders and the guards on them, um, I was actually saying how, um, how the guard itself is a very good tool and this is where it comes into its own because I want to cut that line and keep it steady and I want to try and get I want to give the grinder the best opportunity to win this competition as it can have so I want to be as fair as possible and when I'm cutting with the grinder I'll have this hand here I'll have my thumb on the guard which is perfectly safe I'm on the guard and then I'll cut like that and I'll use it to steady my hand to get the cut and cut through like that and um, so having the guard on is, is a really good thing. The other thing is as well, you will notice that the sparks will shoot out that way, will shoot down that way. What they won't be doing is shooting straight up at my face. You may get some that bounce off the steel and back. That's why I will be wearing a full face visor. However, 
with the guard on, the sparks should be going away from me because the guard is protecting me, not just from um, catching my hand on the disc. If this did shatter, then pieces that fly off will fly in all the directions except me and my face. And this is why guards are so important. So please do use your guards, but they're a useful tool for directing the sparks and for giving you something to help you guide where you're going with grinder. So let me get this plugged in, get my uh, mask on and let's get this cut. So before we move on to the next um, method, there's the first disadvantage of a grinder. It does leave very sharp burrs. Now I took my gloves off to show you that piece of metal. Um, I put it down on the bench behind me um, and that sharp bear caught me. Um, it's that easy. Um, no, it's only a little nick, it's not, it's not a big deal. But it's a, it is a disadvantage of using a grinder. It leaves really sharp burrs. So I'll live. Um, and now we need to move on to the next method, which is the gas cutting torch. So I'm going to get the, another piece marked out at 50 mil, um, and then we'll get the gas cutting torch and we'll have a look at how well that does cutting the piece. So I have my gas torch here. Now in order to cut straight with the gas torch, I need to be able to have a straight edge for it to run against. So basically I'm going to be cutting like this, so the torch will follow that guide to keep, make sure that it's straight. To try and cut straight, freehand, like that, it's gonna be all over the place. So I need a straight edge, so I'm going to use this straight edge here. Uh, in fact, no I'm not. I'm going to use one of these, this is steel, and it'll work better. So I'm gonna use one of these, but I need to know how far across from the line to set this piece. Now, if I show you the end of the torch, there, the nozzle, um, measuring from the centre of the nozzle, and you can just see the nozzle there, from the centre of the nozzle is 5mm. It's the same as the plasma cutter, that's 5mm as well. So, I need to measure 5mm in from my hole at each end, make sure out from my line, each end. That's where I need to set my straight edge so that I end up cutting where I need to cut. So I'm going to clamp that down. If I don't, I'm going to try and follow it, it's just going to move. So let me grab a clamp, we'll get that clamped up and then we'll get this fired up and we'll do a cut. Okay, so my balls are on. I've got my torch. Start off with the flammable gas. Because this is propane, it's a clean burn, you're not seeing soot come off. If this was a settling, and when you do that, there's loads of soot coming off when you uh, light it. Introduce the oxygen. It's very plain. Make sure that's working. And we're good to go. So I've done the cut, um, let's have a look at the piece which is here on the floor, not a chance, that is red hot, that is very very hot, as is now 
the workpiece. Um, if you remember the grinder, I was able, able to pick it up. It was warm, it was pretty warm, but it wasn't hot, too hot to hold. This is red hot. So now our first disadvantage of cutting with gas, it heats the work up a lot. So I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers so I can pick it up and show you the edge. Ooh, very hot. So, let me see if we can get in with this. As you can see, it's left slag behind, a lot of slag behind, and a fairly rough edge. Now I will admit this, the nozzle on my torch is for cutting much thicker steel. And um, if you had a small nozzle, it would cut, uh, it cut neater. Um, however, you will still get a rough, a fairly rough edge with oxypropane. Oxycetylene is slightly better, um, but you do need to match the nozzle to the thickness that you're cutting really. So, um, but yeah, that's the result. Um, this is still red hot, so we'll leave this to cool. Um, I'm gonna put it with the one we cut off the grinder, and then we need to look at plasma cutter. So my plasma cutter is turned on. I've got it at 40 amps at the minute. It's plugged into the compressor because we need compressed air for the plasma cutter to work. The, plasma, the, the compressor's already charged up. It's very noisy, so I did that off camera. Um, I have my earth lead, because you need an earth lead with a plasma cutter because it creates a electrical circuit to form the electric arc that does the cutting. So my earth lead is on. I, I pre measured this one and I've already set the straight edge so I'm ready to go so let's I'll zoom you in let's cut um, the piece with the plasma cutter Okay, just turn the plasma cutter off, and then it. So I've cut the piece with the plasma cutter. Let's see how hot that is. And it's, it's hot, but I can pick it up. But it is quite hot. Nowhere near as hot as with the gas cutter, um, but definitely hotter than cutting with the grinder. It is a hot cutting technique after all. So with my um, TIG welding gloves on, it's perfectly manageable. So let's have a look at the, the cut. So there's the cut, as you can see. Um, it does leave a slightly rough edge. Um, you can get it neater. Um, probably needs a new nozzle on it. Um, but it was pretty quick. Now it does leave slag the same as with the um, gas cutter, uh, which is on the bench there. But there's a difference, and we'll see that in a minute when we come to clean these up uh, and how much um, preparation work or, or after work is needed to get the edge nice and clean after you've done your cutting. So let's look at that next. So after you've done your cut, whichever method you want, how much cleanup work is afterwards to get the piece how you want the finished product, the finished edge. So let's start with the grinder. So that's the edge that we cut with the grinder. Still got them sharp burrs on, as you can see. Um, so how do we clean that up? Um, we could put sanding disc um, on the grinder or a grind disc and run the grinder across just to take that off and give it a bit of a chamfer if that's what we want, maybe we're welding. We could use a deburring tool like this. And um, these are, uh, relatively cheap and just run it along the edge and that will take the burr off and um, that's worked pretty good that's nice and smooth now what it hasn't done and won't do is take that piece off the end actually it does <laughs> I stand corrected it's not good for the burring deburring tool I'm sure but it's not perfect but yeah 
not a bad edge. Um, we're getting close, you can see that. It's not a bad, nice, clean cut edge. So, so far you would think the grinder's winning and it'll be down to personal choice and what equipment you have, of course. But let's be fair, let's finish off and let's do, do the others as well. So next up, we have the piece that was cut with the gas cutter. Now that's looking pretty, pretty rough at the minute. So we're going, we are going to have to grind this and take off the slag. Now, will the slag, first of all, chip off? Let's try that. I'll zoom you in so you can see and we'll try chipping it off. Okay, so I've got a pair, of, uh, a piece of um, hardened steel that is quite sharp on the edge. It's great for chipping, so we'll try and chip that off. The answer is no. <laughs> so let's get this in the vise. Let's put a flap pad on the uh, grinder. Let's get this cleaned up and give it a fair shot. Okay, so I've got a flat pad sanding disc on my grinder, ready. Put the piece in the vise. Mask on, keep me safe. Now when you're grinding with a grinder like this, I see people doing it that way and grinding. I'll do it this way for the camera, grinding in. What you're gonna do is you're gonna end up with a very wavy line. If you want to get keep your maintain your flat clean edge when you've cleaned this keep the grinder flat sat flat on and grind that way that will maintain the nice straight edge that you've already cut um, and then in order to get the slag off the sides and make sure you've got the burrs off you tilt it that way tilt it that way but keep it flat you end up with a nice straight edge so let's get that done now There's our piece, as you can see, it's got a nice clean edge now, that looks very nice. Um, a little lump that I've missed at the end there, but that's not down to the grinder or the technique. So there we've got a nice clean edge um, and that's ready to go. So we've cut with the gas, but bear in mind, and we'll go through this with all the pros and cons, um, not, I've now needed two tools to create this because I've had to use the gas cutter and I've had to use then the grinder um, in order to end up with a nice usable clean edge. So that was the gas. Let's do the same test now with the one cut with the plasma cutter. So here's the piece cut with the plasma cutter and there's a lot less slag to start with. So let's see if that chips off. So, oops, you can see it's not a bad edge at all, it's quite clean, the slag's gone, it chips off very easily. Now I could get the grinder and give that a quick polish um, to take off, um, however that is good to go for welding if, I'm, if it's been welded straight onto something. Um, and um, it's actually not a bad edge. I um, don't know if it shows up on the camera. So nothing more needed really. 
with the one cut with the plasma cutter. So there's the test. Um, so what are the pros and cons between the three? Well, first of all, the results um, are very similar. Um, the grinder, um, I'll put the time how long it took on the screen, um, but the grinder uh, was probably took the longest um, in terms of the actual time to cut, um, but it leaves a very nice clean edge, but a very sharp, sharp burr that you have to be careful of. However, the peat is also uh, not too hot to handle straight afterwards, so that's the first thing. With this one, um, with the gas cutter, um, it doesn't have as clean an edge. Um, it doesn't, it does take a lot more grinding and cleaning to get the edge to a usable state. Um, and the piece was red hot, so uh, you have to wait for it to cool down or cool it in water. Um, so that's the gas cutter, but there are more advantages than this, as we'll look at in a minute. Then we've got the plasma cutter, um, probably the quickest of all to use, only needed chipping off and it was usable. Um, if you want a really clean edge that's going to be a seen edge and it's not going to be welded or anything, you may want to tickle it up with a, with a grinder. Um, but it was cool enough to work with, um, couldn't pick it up with my bare hands, um, but with a pair of, and these are on the TIG gloves, they're not, they're not the heavy duty welding gloves, I was able to pick that up no problem as you saw on the camera. Um, so yeah, plasma, probably the quickest I would have thought, well, again, put the times on the screen. Um, so they're the three. However, they have advantages and disadvantages you may not think of. I think just looking at the piece and convenience of cutting and then being able to use the piece straight away, I think the plasma cutter wins it for me. Um, simply because all you have to do is very easily chip that slag off, it's ready to go. Um, and it's very easy to cut. Um, there's only a few sparks. Um, it's not noisy at all. If you take out the compressor, <laughs> the noise of the compressor, that's down to my compressor, I could do with a better one. Um, for me, the plasma wins. Um, the other advantage, and I'll show a bit, a bit of video now, the other advantage of the plasma cutter is you can cut any shape with it, um, including circles. Um, and uh, uh, it works really well um, and it, you can use it freehand um, and it's very quick. What are the disadvantages? Uh, a plasma cutter is a plasma cutter. It isn't anything else, whereas the other two are. Um, so the plasma cutter can cut and it can cut circles and it can cut freehand and it can cut aluminium. Um, which is another advantage of the plasma cutter, it can cut aluminium really well. Um, whereas the grinder, for example, on aluminium, um, you'll find that the blades get clogged up very easy, very quickly um, and doesn't cut aluminium very well and the aluminium will get incredibly hot. Um, and you cannot cut aluminium with the gas cutter, it'll just melt and end up in a blob and um, all sorts of horrendous things. So that is one advantage. Um, at the end, I'll put a list up of all of these advantages. Um, so for me at the minute, the favourite is the plasma cutter, but it is a one job tool. It'll cut. Um, so what about the grinder? Well, the grinder, probably that, I think once we look at the times, probably took the longest. It was certainly the noisiest, but it did a very nice job. Um, uh, it's cheap. Um, you know, even a, even a parquet basement, um, cheap, no brand angle grinder um, with a slitter disc on will give you the same results. Um, but like I said, it's very noisy. The big disadvantage of a grinder, you're only going to cut straight lines. Now you will see on YouTube people cutting circles, but they're not. They're cutting a series of straight lines, which then leaves your the piece that you've got left over really uh, messed up. Um, and then they'll get a, uh, a sanding disc on and then round it to the shape that they want. So a grinder will only cut straight lines. So that is a disadvantage. The advantage is it does other things. So it can grind, it can cut, and it can sand, and it can polish. So 
the angle grinder is a useful tool because it will do many other things as well as cutting but it'll only cut straight lines so that's the grinder but it's cheap finally the gas cutter um, now you can only cut you can't cut sorry you can't cut um, aluminium with it whereas the grinder at a push will not brilliantly but the plasma cutter certainly will and um, this won't so but on mild steel it does a good job its advantage is this was cut in 3 mil thick steel if we were cutting 20 mil thick steel the plasma cutter wouldn't do it because my plasma cutter won't cut that thick you'd have to have a much bigger far more expensive plasma cutter to do that the grinder you'd be at it all day trying to cut 20 mil steel and you wouldn't get a straight cut that's where the gas cutters come into the wrong they can cut very thick steel but it can also do other jobs you can braze with it you can um, heat up steel bars so that you can bend them you can heat up steel um, in, in order to uh, take out a warp in it you can there's lots and lots of jobs you can do with um, a, a, an oxy propane or oxycetylene torch so it isn't a one job tool it's handy to have now I still have one because I use it um, for exactly that heating up steel to bend it so I can get some really nice tight bends and for some uh, bronze and brass brazing jobs have a different torch head but it's the same same setup um, whereas with the plasma cutter all I can do is cut with it and, and etc the other advantage is the oxypropane the gas set is completely portable it is self-contained you could put that in the back of your car drive into the middle of the field and still cut with it if you've got oxycetylene and you've got a welding torch with it you can cut and weld in the middle of the field with no power source you can't do that with a plasma cutter in the plasma cutter you need a power source you also need compressed air so you need a compressor with the grinder you'd need a generator or a power source to plug into so each of these all have their own special speciality their own pros and cons so it's really down to you my choice is the plasma cutter every time because it's easy it's clean and there's very little cleanup work and it's so useful so for me it's the plasma cutter for you it may be the oxypropane or oxycetylene cutter for many many other people because I've seen how many people use uh, angle grinders on YouTube it'll be the angle grinder so it's up to you which you use just be aware of the different pros and cons and um, so that's it really I hope you found this informative um, I've had a lot of fun making uh, the video, certainly have, um, and uh, we'll be back again very soon with, uh, with more videos um, and, and more work. So please do join me again and any comments or you have any questions or you want to make any comments, always happy to reply. Just leave them in the comment section. Other than that, I'll see you next time in the workshop.